various animals appear. There are lots of living species alive on our planet today. Far too many for us to count, and we're finding more all the time. A beetle under a magnifying glass. All of these living things have changed over time. A toothy crocodile. Some just a little bit. Others quite a lot. An arrow points from the word dinosaur to a chicken. For a long time, there weren't many scientific ideas on how or why these living things changed. But then, in 1858, a revolutionary new idea was presented to the Linnaean Society in London. A Victorian journal. This was the idea of evolution through natural selection. And it came to us thanks to Charles Darwin and Alfred Russell Wallace. Photos of Darwin and Wallace. This prompted Darwin to publish his book, On the Origin of Species, just a year later. The cover of Origin of Species. But how does natural selection actually work? To explain this, we're going to need an example. So, think about a group of giraffes on the African savannah. We know that giraffes, as a species, are well suited to survive the savannah environment. They're well camouflaged, their long necks allow them to reach the tall trees in the savannah, and they have long tongues to strip leaves from branches. We call these features adaptations and they help the giraffes to survive in their particular environment. A dictionary definition. But even with these common adaptations, individuals of the same species are almost always ever so slightly different from one another. A pair of giraffes. We see this in almost every species, and it's called variation. A dictionary definition. This variation can lead to some individuals having an advantage in their environment. Giraffes with longer necks can reach higher into the trees. This means they can eat more food, so they're more likely to survive and reproduce. A baby giraffe appears. This adaptation will be passed on to offspring, leading to more giraffes with longer necks. A giraffe grows. These giraffes grow up, reproduce and pass the adaptation on again, and again, and again. More baby giraffes appear. Giraffes without this neck adaptation might not be as successful, as they can't reach as much food. A short-necked giraffe. They might produce fewer offspring, or not survive long enough to have any. The giraffe disappears. A neck that's too long might not help a giraffe too much either. A long-necked giraffe topples over. This is natural selection. A dictionary definition. Individuals of a species with better suited adaptations to an environment are more likely to survive and pass them on to their offspring. A book titled A History of Giraffes. When this happens over a long time, something really quite special can happen. Words appear present day. Take our giraffe. If we go back generations... One million years ago. Lots and lots of generations. You'll eventually get to an animal that looks a bit like this. 23 million years ago. Doesn't look much like a giraffe, does it? A short-necked mammal. Fossils show us that millions of years ago, the ancestors of giraffes had much shorter necks. Over time, they got longer and longer. Very slowly evolving into modern-day giraffes that are adapted to life on the savannah. The mammal transforms. But those ancient ancestors didn't evolve into just giraffes. A line from the ancestors to giraffe. Evolution went in different directions. That's how we also ended up with the giraffe's relative, the okapi. A line to an okapi. Their adaptations help them to survive in dense forests. The okapi stands among plants. Both the giraffe and the okapi are very different, but they evolved from the same common ancestor and took different evolutionary paths because of the different environments they lived in. However, it's important to remember that there are many other reasons that things change over time. Like all complex animals, giraffes don't look the way they do just because of how they eat. Avoiding being eaten, communicating with other giraffes, fighting for dominance, surviving childhood and finding a mate are just some of the important parts of giraffe lives. These have all influenced how they look and behave today. Living things are still evolving today. A sloth hangs from a tree. And this can be a slow process. But our environment is changing quicker than ever before. Ice caps melt. Living things have to change to fit these new environments. But can they keep up? Stranded polar bears. Museum scientist Adrian Lister standing in a science lab. Evolution happens on a variety of time scales. Over tens of millions of years, we can see the unfolding of evolution in groups such as whales or horses or primates. But evolution can also happen much more quickly. A lizard on a tree. One example is shown by lizards that live on Caribbean islands. Researchers measured the body parts of the lizards over a series of years. At one point during the study, a major hurricane hit one of the islands 
and many of the lizards died through being swept out to sea. The researchers found that those lizards that survived had larger toe pads and shorter hind limbs than those that were lost. The lizards that survived did so by clinging to branches and the larger toe pads and shorter hind limbs enabled them to cling closer and more firmly to the branches. A lizard clings to a tree through a gust of wind. Evolution had happened. The population and the species had changed. This example of the lizards is very relevant to us today because hurricanes are increasing in frequency and intensity due to human-caused climate change. A hit by a change. hurricane. Over the course of millions of years, species have periodically gone extinct, but new species have evolved to take their place, so there was a balance. Environments are changing so quickly as a result of human action that many species Birds may not have the rubbish. time to adapt and are likely to go extinct. And this is due not only to climate change, but also to the destruction of habitats for example, the cutting down of forests to make way for cattle ranches or oil palm plantations. If we want to preserve the natural world, we have to learn to live in harmony with it. And that means caring for natural habitats, preserving them, and also urgently tackling climate change. A pair of so what have we learnt? Well, we know that individuals of a species are almost always slightly different from one another. A giraffe and, and this is called offspring. variation. We know that when this variation helps an individual survive and reproduce in its environment, it's passed on to offspring who will share the benefits. We know that over time, this a adaptation drives evolution, sometimes resulting in a new species altogether. And we know that evolution is just one of many reasons why things change. Well, I think that's about all we can fit into one video. But if you want to learn more about natural selection, then why not check out our website? And don't forget to like and subscribe for more content from the Natural History Film Museum. Film credits appear over footage of giraffes in the savannah.